Yellow Productions presents Leisure Time in London. Hi, my laddies. Uh, good morning. I am Archbishop Chris. I'm Laura Turfey. And together we make the royal family of Christopher. And today we're going to be showing you around London. Good day. Our first stop is the Tower of London, uh, which was the uh, royal palace built by King Henry III in 1285. Uh, it was originally built as the royal palace. It was then used as the royal prison to house prisoners. Uh, this is also the site of most of the famous English head choppings, uh, and it's now used to house the crown jewels. The first person executed here was the second wife of King Henry VIII, Queen Anne Boleyn. The executioner removed his sword, which had been hidden beneath some straw. He then stood behind her and with one stroke removed her head. He was so quick and so precise that when he lifted up her head for all to see, the public records show that her eyes and lips continued to move for 25 seconds in prayer. She did not realise that she was dead. And it dawned on her pretty quick after that. <laughs> This tower is known as the Bloody Tower for the murders that occurred in the tower. Uh, Queen Elizabeth I named it Bloody. And in the basement of the Bloody Tower is where they keep the instruments of torture, including the rack, which was invented here in jolly old England. Something else that is wonderfully British besides pain is tea. The British have a love for tea. They love it so much that they've invented a special meal called afternoon tea. Most British citizens will take afternoon tea between 3 and 5 p.m. They'll have a cup of special afternoon blend tea and something sweet to go with it. A very traditional sweet to have with your afternoon tea is a scone with clotted cream and jam. In a restaurant, the collection of tea, scone, cream, and jam is typically called cream tea. And here you see us enjoying our cream tea at Harrods, the most expensive department store in the world. We also had a more formal afternoon tea at the Orangery at Kensington Palace. This was a more traditional afternoon tea because in addition to the tea and the scone, it was also served with cucumber and mayonnaise finger sandwiches, mm -hmm, and also a slice of orange cake. But let's get back to the scones. Most scones that I've had in the United States are dry and hard, kind of like a hockey puck. But the scones in Britain are soft, moist, and with the addition of the clotted cream and the jam, most delicious. Now that our bellies were full from the afternoon tea, we're ready to head out back on the town. And in London, there are some very odd signs across the city. Take this one. This sign lets us know that there's a humped zebra crossing nearby. Do you see any humped zebras? Huh? <gasps> I think I see one over there, at the Oxford Circus. Nope, no hump zebras here. Just lots and lots of people, and they're not here to see hump zebras, they're here to shop, because Oxford Circus is one of London's largest shopping districts. It's also home to Hamley's Toys, which is the largest toy store across Europe. Seven floors of toys. Heaven on Earth for little kids and big kids like me. A few blocks down from Hamley's is another circus, Piccadilly Circus. Again, no animals here, but lots of bright lights and lots of people, including our friends, the Hare Krishnas. When you're out on the streets of London and not listening to the Hare Krishnas, you'll see some interesting signs in the crosswalks. They'll tell you to either look left or to look right. And sometimes they may tell you what our mommies told us, and that's to look both ways before you cross the street. 
My favorite British phrase comes to us in the London Underground, where they don't tell you where the exit is, but they tell you where the way out is, and they don't tell you caution or danger, but they tell you, please mind the gap. Now we're on our way to head up to Underscan at Trafalgar Square. This is a public art exhibition in Trafalgar Square that when your shadow is cast on someone, you interact with them. Once you walk away, they lose interest and disappear in seven seconds. Another sight in Trafalgar Square is the St. Martin in the Fields Church, which is a place of worship and also a business. And they run the business out of their crypt. There's a shop in the crypt, Christmas cards in the crypt, and a cafe in the crypt. And when they say crypt, yes, this really is the place where they used to bury people. On the floor, you can still see some of the headstones. And on the tables, you can see the tasty food. Fish and chips was the special today. One might think that dining in a crypt is a little creepy, but churches in London have all but given up on asking for donations at services, and many churches have cafes in their crypt as a way to make money for the congregation. Even St. Paul's Cathedral, which holds some ceremonies for the royal family, has a cafe in their crypt. Today, they were serving roast beef, Quite tasty, indeed. Every Sunday in Hyde Park at Speaker's Corner, anybody who wants to get up and talk can get on their stool and draw an audience. Uh, there's about four main subjects here today. Uh, one's against the war in Iraq, one's uh, for Jesus, one's for Islam, and one's a guy who wants to marry about a million wives. Uh, basically, the louder and crazier you are, the more people you draw into your crowd. No one is walking! I think most of you can discern between the fake speakers and the real speakers. Man, after listening to all these crazy people, I need a drink. And I don't even drink, but I'm in luck. Because in London, there are over 200 pubs. And they all have names that correspond to a picture over the pub. So that when people couldn't read, someone could say, Meet me at the pub with the porcupine on it. But you know what? I'm a huge wuss. And so I just got a Coca-Cola to drink with a little bit of ice. And yes, that is one cube of ice in my Coca-Cola. To eat, I ordered the Christmas special mushroom soup and turkey with potatoes, stuffing, carrots, Brussels sprouts, and yes, a sausage. And with our bellies full, we're off to our final destination, the London Eye, to see some fabulous views of London. The London Eye, when it was built in the year 2000, was the world's largest observation wheel. It takes 30 minutes to go around, uh, 25 people get to sit in a capsule, and it's the finest view of the city of London from the top of the London Eye. My laddies, I feel our trip has come to an end. Until next time, cheerio! Cheerio!